Hey guys, welcome to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video, we're going to be creating a really cool hologram effect using motion tracking and 3D layers in After Effects 2021, and no plugins are needed. All the project files, including all the assets that I use in the tutorial, are available for download via the link in the description below. And if you enjoy this video, remember to hit like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future motion design content like this. So let's get into After Effects and get going. So here we are in After Effects. And the first thing we're gonna do is go up to Composition, New Composition. And let's create a main comp here. I'm gonna make it 1920 by 1080 pixels. I'm gonna make my frame rate to be 25 frames per second. You can choose which frame rate you're happy to work with. I'm also gonna set my duration to be eight seconds long. And it doesn't really matter about the background color at this point and hit okay. I've now got our main comp. You see there's nothing in it right now. So let's import some assets. So right click in your project panel, import, file. I've kept all these assets in an asset folder that I've created for this project. And I've got a few different things here. So I've got my logo, I've got my tracking footage, a displacement MP4 and some other bits and pieces, PNGs that I'm gonna put into my hologram. Now just be aware that with your PNGs, when you're bringing them in to be used for the hologram, make sure you've got their background as transparent. Open that up, I'll just demonstrate that quickly. So here's my Photoshop little logo here that I'm gonna use as part of my hologram. If I turn on my transparency toggle, you'll see it's just the outline of the logo that I'm looking for. So I can get that kind of hologram effect so I can see through it. So make sure if you're bringing in any PNGs to use in your hologram that you've removed the background. Okay, perfect, let's just shut that off. I'm gonna get my footage for tracking here. Now this is footage that I've literally just taken on my phone, no fancy equipment, but we're gonna be tracking this footage. We want to track the movement of this watch so that our logo will follow it. So keep that in mind if you're filming your own footage, not to make any crazy arm movements or anything like that because the tracker will struggle with that. You see how I've actually kept it quite steady from two seconds onwards after I press that button because I know that I'm going to be tracking that footage in After Effects. So when do I push my button for my hologram to start coming out? About two seconds. So at two seconds in the timeline, that is where I'm going to start tracking the movement of this watch. So to do that, we go up to Window and Tracker to get our tracker panel to pop up. Now it has popped up somewhere, but we can't quite see it. So I'll just scroll down. Here is our tracker. Now before we actually start tracking anything, if we go up to Layer, New and Null Object, we're going to create a null object. We just keep it called Null 1 at the moment. We're going to use this null object to store the tracking information. So I'm at two seconds in my timeline. Now select your footage at that point or wherever you want your hologram to start appearing to start following the movement of your watch or you could use a bracelet or if you've got a ring or something like that. So make sure it's selected, go across to your tracker panel and where it says track motion, click that once. Now you see in your comp window here, this little track point has popped up. And what we want to do is put this track point on our watch somewhere to track the movement of it. So if I take it here, I'm gonna bring it over. I'm gonna increase the size of it slightly. That'll just help us out. And I'm gonna put it right on this corner here, I think. An edge or somewhere that's got a good definition is a good place to put a tracker. If it doesn't track correctly first time or something like that, you can reset it and try a different position for your tracking point. So make sure it's at the point in the footage that you want it to start tracking. Make sure you've placed your point somewhere sensible. Go across to where it says analyze and hit this analyze forward once. And you see how it's going through the footage and that box is just tracking it. So you see there we had a bit of a wiggle right at the end. No problem. What we'll do is we'll just reset it like this. Go back to two seconds, increase the size of our tracking point again, and just try a different point. So let's move this up here. Let's try right on the edge of my strap here. And let's see how that does. So make sure you're at that same point again in your timeline. Go across to your tracker and analyze forward like so. So I think that looks a lot smoother. So we'll go with that. Now what we want to do is go to edit target and make sure that this is set to the null object you've created. It is, it's null one. Okay, I'm gonna hit apply. I'm gonna hit okay. And you see how that is all our tracking information. If we minimize that up, go and select our null layer, press U. You see all that tracking information from that two second point is on our null object. So that is what we want at this point. Minimize that. Now let's actually make our hologram. So let's go up to composition, new composition. We'll call this logo comp and we'll keep all the other settings the same. Okay, and now we're in our logo comp. Let's bring in some of our content here from over in the project panel. I'm gonna turn off the transparency grid just so we can see what we're doing. I'm gonna bring in my logo like this. I'm going to bring in my little like symbol or thumbs up symbol. I've got my AI logo, my After Effects logo and my Photoshop logo. Now what we want to do is just build this up to be what you want it to look like. So this can be anything, very custom to what you want it to be. You could even just put your logo in it at first and see how you get on. So I've just set out my logos here and what I'm going to do is I've also got this little thumbs up symbol. I'm going to select that in the timeline and scale that up also 190% ish. 
Yep, and I'm going to apply just a little fill just so I can see what it looks like. But it doesn't matter what colours things are at this point because we're going to be adding an overall fill effect to the whole of the hologram in the main comp. So this is just to help me with the layout so I can see what it actually looks like. You can also add text to this. I'm going to just go up and select my text tool, click anywhere in the timeline, after effects. So any kind of text that you want to put in here, it can just add a bit of interest. But like I said, this can be all customised to what you want yours to look like. One other little thing which I'll add to add a bit of interest a little ticking clock. So that's really easy to do. So I'm going to go up to layer, new, solid. We'll just call this timer. Okay. Go across to your effects and presets and type in numbers. Okay. Use this one here underneath text and drag that onto your solid layer. Select the font that you want to use. I'm going to choose the same font that I've got my text in and hit okay. See our little clock has popped up right in the middle and it was bright red but like I said the colour doesn't matter at the moment. Move this to be on top of my After Effects text. I'm going to go over to my Effects Controls, change this to be Timecode 25 and I'm just going to move this so it lines up with my text. Now this is just going to tick along over time and it's just going to add a little moving element to an otherwise static hologram. But like I said you don't just have to use images at this point, you could use little animations, things like that. Whatever you want to try into your hologram, you can try loads of different things and just follow along the same process. So minimize that up. Now as you can notice I've got these two icons overlaid each other. I've got my logo and I've also got this little thumbs up like symbol. I want this GDP logo to disappear and this thumbs up like icon to appear halfway through. So at about five seconds I think in the timeline, remember our hologram doesn't start appearing until two seconds, I'm going to select my like PNG which is the thumbs up one and my GDP logo and I'm going to do command shift D what that does is it splits the layers at that point. Bring this up like that and I'm going to delete out the GDP logo from the second part and I'm going to delete out the first part of the like PNG from the start of the timeline. It's now going to go from my GDP logo to my other little icon at that point. Okay, so when you're happy with how your hologram looks, go back to your main comp. Now what we're going to do is go to our project panel, go to your logo comp, which is the one we've just been working on. We've just been building up our different layers and things in there. Drag this into your main comp timeline. See it pops up for us there. We'll apply our fill effect at this point. So go across to effects and presets and type in fill. Use this one here underneath generate and drag that onto your logo comp. Now I'm just going to keep mine white. I think it complements my setup nicely, but you can choose whatever color you want here. Now go to two seconds in the timeline. This is obviously when we want this to start appearing. Let's just split this logo comp layer like we did to the other layers in the logo composition. So go to two seconds, command shift D, delete out that first part of your composition. Now you can always get that back. If you hover over the end point here, you can drag this back out again. Now we want to go across here in our timeline and with our logo comp selected, make sure that you check this box here to make it a 3D layer go to two seconds or wherever your movement starts or you want your hologram to start appearing in your timeline and what we want to do is line this logo comp up how we kind of want it to look almost as if it has just come out of our watch so obviously it doesn't look very hologrammy right now but that's going to be the next step so let's just line that up here go into my rotation tools and we've got more rotation options obviously because it's now a 3d layer so i'm going to rotate it slightly this way so it almost looks like it's coming out like that that way this way and also move it up. It doesn't matter that it's cut off slightly some of the text or whatever you've got in your logo comp because remember it's going to be moving along with your watch. If you're happy with that start position for your hologram, if you select this little pick whip here, click and drag onto this null one object. So that is our null object. You see now it's now parented and linked to this null one object. So now we go through our timeline, it should move along with the movement that we have tracked for the watch. Perfect. So let's try and make this look a bit more hologram like now. So let's add some effects. First things first, select in the timeline, go over to your effects and presets and let's add a glow. Use this one here underneath stylize, drag that onto your logo comp layer. Now let's go over to your effects controls. I'll minimize up the fill at the moment. Now I'm going to change the threshold to be 85. I'm going to change my radius to be 45. I'll keep my intensity at one right now. And I'm going to change my glow colors from original colors to A and B colors. Now down here, I'm going to keep my color A white, but I'm actually going to change this black color for color B to maybe be like a nice turquoisey blue. You see that kind of effect it gives it in the composition window happy with that. Minimize that up. Now let's add another little effect here. Let's go back over to effects and presets and type Venetian like the blinds. This one here will go transition Venetian blinds. Drag that onto your logo comp. Go to two seconds in your timeline. 
we're going to keyframe this transition completion property. So scroll this along to be 100%. You see what that does in the composition window. Toggle on the stopwatch at two seconds. Go to about two and a half seconds. And I'm going to change this to be 10%. Over time, it's going to come on, but it's still going to have those little lines even when it's fully on. I'm going to change the direction to be 90, so they're more horizontal. I'm going to change my width to be 12, just so it's a bit more subtle. See that effect it's given it there with those little lines in our hologram. Zoom out. I'm also going to select my logo comp and press T for opacity and bring the overall opacity of this layer down to about 75% because realistically you'll be able to see through a hologram. Now we had little glitches also happening in our hologram so that's what we're going to make now and we're going to do that by using a displacement map. So we're going to bring in this displacement mp4 which is just a little noise mp4 if I bring it into the timeline here that I've sourced from pexels.com just a free little video of lots of different glitches and things like that. We're going to use this as the basis of our little glitches that are happening. So bring this to the bottom of your timeline and just turn the visibility of it off. Go over to your effects and presets and type displacement map. Use this one here underneath distort displacement map. Drag that onto your logo comp layer. Go to your two seconds in the timeline and we minimize up our glow in the effects controls and our fill and our Venetian blinds. We're just working on this displacement map effect at the moment. Where it says displacement map layer, at the moment it says one logo if you change that to be displacement mp4 so that's our noisy video that we imported so it's going to be using that as the source now we're going to be animating this maximum horizontal displace property so we're going to turn this up to be 50 to start with let's see what that does to our hologram you see how it's clearly distorted but we do want to be able to read it so we don't want it to do this the whole time so we want to keyframe that property so at two seconds when it's coming to life we want it to be quite glitchy toggle on the stopwatch for this max horizontal displace and keep the value at 50. select your logo comp in the timeline, press U. When you hit U on a layer, it'll reveal any and all keyframes that you've got on that layer. So we minimize up our Venetian blinds, barely we concentrate on this displacement map here. We've got our keyframe at two seconds, that's at 50. We can see the values here, 50. We want to go along until it's completely on, about here. Toggle on another keyframe, but keep it at that 50 value. So we're just going to use this option here. This just creates a keyframe at that point in the timeline at the current value. Go a few frames forward, and then we'll bring this down to zero. This means it's going to be glitching, 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 and then it's going to go off. And that's what we want. And we want to keyframe this the same way a few times across the whole timeline. Just after three seconds, we want to create another keyframe of the zero value. So it's currently at zero. You can see here, we just want another keyframe of that zero value. So just toggle this option here a few frames forward. Let's set this to be 50. A few frames forward, set this to be zero. Let's do the same again. So along, we want a zero keyframe. So toggle on this option here because the value is already at zero. A few frames forward, move this up to 50. That's created another keyframe along zero you see what I'm trying to do here so we'll just copy and paste those a few times along select them in the timeline by just dragging over them you know they're selected when they're all blue command C to copy those keyframes so at about five seconds we know it changes to our new icon so that's where I'm going to make sure there is a glitch happening about here it's going to glitch and it's going to change to the next icon happy with that command V there we go so we've now keyframed our little glitch effect throughout the timeline. Let's just minimize that up for now. A good point is any to go up and hit save. What we're going to do is we're going to use this logo comp to create a reflection in the watch face here, just to give it a more realistic feel. So to do that, we're going to select our logo comp in the timeline, command D, select it, press enter to rename it. So go along, call this reflection. Now you'll see here that it's also going to follow the null one object because it's a duplicate of the logo comp in the timeline. It's also a 3D layer. So that means if we select it now in the timeline, go into the transform properties and we can rotate it in the X direction towards you like this. And we want to position it so it looks like it is the right placement to be on top of the watch. And then we're going to scale this down. So select in the timeline, press S. I think maybe about 15% of the original size. Yes, you see here now you can just see that in the watch. It gives it quite a nice effect. But as you can see, it has got a little cross over here. You can see the text is kind of coming off the watch. Now we're going to be adding a blur to this little reflection. So it's not going to be super obvious, but we don't want anything coming off the end. So to solve that, we're going to add a mask to this layer. So select your logo reflection layer in the timeline. Go up to your pen tool. What we're going to do is just draw around our watch face here. So just around the face close the mask. Now select your layer again, go into masks, 
go into mask one and we're going to animate the mask path. So at two seconds, toggle on your mask path property to create a keyframe at that point. Now let's go along to three seconds and let's just adjust the mask path as needed. So you might not have to do too much, but it's just to keep it nice and neat. So select in the timeline, you see these turn to little circles, which means you can drag them around again. So I'm just going to bring this down slightly so we can actually see it there. You see how it's just coming out and it'll just stop anything from looking out of place. Go along to four seconds, move our points again. And every time you move these points, it's creating a new keyframe. So I'm just gonna do that for the rest of the timeline and then I'll be back. So that's me just keyframed the mask there to follow that watch face over time. So if this little reflection pops out of the watch face at any point, that'll just catch it for us. We're also gonna add a fast box blur effect onto this reflection, like I said. So we go across to effects and presets, type in fast, box blur use this option here underneath blur and sharpen and drag that onto your logo reflection layer you see it's popped up here in our effects controls we'll just minimize up all these different effects so we can see what we're doing so we are working with this fast box blur and we're just going to change this value blur radius to be 30 and see now you can't really tell what it is but over time if we zoom out you can see that little reflection and it just is a nice little effect to add to this overall composition. Now in the example I showed you as well, we had little almost rays coming out of the watch as if our logo was actually beaming out of the face itself. So that's what we're gonna create now. So minimize this up in your timeline. Select your original logo comp, command D in the timeline, press enter to rename it. We'll call this one logo projection. Bring that logo projection comp underneath your original logo comp. Now minimize up all these effects here. Let's see what we're doing. Go across to effects and presets and type in CC radial blur. Use this one here underneath blur and sharpen. Drag that onto your logo projection layer. Now let's go to two seconds or when we can start to see this actually on the screen. So about two and a half seconds or so. Go across to CC radial blur in your effects controls. Change the type to be fading zoom. We're gonna change our amount to be minus 150. We're gonna to go to center and select this little option here. You see when you hover over it, you can select it. We're gonna move the center point. So you see here this cross appears in the comp window. Let's click at the base of our watch here. And you see now that's created these little rays that almost come out from the watch, which is a nice effect. So with my logo projection layer still selected in the timeline, I'm going to use this little transform box in my comp window and just bring it in slightly just to make the rays a bit more compact. So now let's turn the opacity of this logo projection layer. So select in the timeline, press T for opacity. It's currently at 75. Let's change that to be about 50 for this layer. Just so it's a subtle effect, but I think it works quite well. And the last thing we're going to add is a little sound effect. So go back to your project panel. We're going to bring in this sound effect hologram. Drag this to the bottom. I'm going to have this starting maybe just before the two seconds. We wanted to make that noise as we push the button and our hologram comes out. So let's press play and see what this sounds like. So let's let that load, go back to zero in the timeline. I'm gonna chop off the end of this composition slightly. If we move this little slider right at the end here, we can decide when our composition will actually stop playing. So our hologram doesn't go any farther than this point. So when you send this to render, it'll stop rendering at that point. We're not gonna have any of this dead space after it. Let's go to zero and see what we've made. This is our little hologram effect using motion tracking and 3D layers in After Effects. So we've used a few different effects here to really make our logo look like a hologram. Why not mix up and you could always take this to the next level and instead of putting in a static logo image, you could create a little logo animation and put that in instead. It's the exact same workflow. So there's so many ways to customize this and produce some really great results. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, remember to hit like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content like this. See you in the next one. If you want to learn more about graphic design, we've created a free one hour training where you'll discover the top five secrets of successful designers, which saves you the hassle of having to figure it all out for yourself. We'll be showing you how to immerse yourself in the sector you're designing for, creative thinking and how to spark creativity, what good composition is and how you can achieve it in your designs, how to pick the right colours for your designs and how to pick the right typefaces for your projects. So if you're serious about levelling up your design skills then make sure to sign up for the next free webinar. Space is limited and these events always fill up fast because they're significantly better than the information others charge you for and ours is free. The link's in the description, you're not going to want to miss it. I'll see you there.